Yo, what up gamers, I'm Report Arc and I'm a Master Tier ADC main on the US server. In this video, I'll be showing you how to carry on Zeri. During her nerfs in the previous patch, Zeri received a lot of changes which buffed her crypt build, and I've since been having tremendous success with that build, as I believe it is now her best build. If you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, and subscribe for more educational ADC content that'll teach you how to play like a Master ADC player. Alright gamers, so as we get into the lane here, let me just run you through the build real quick. For runes, we're going to be using the Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Taste of Blood, and the Ingenious Hunter. Everything there should be pretty self-explanatory except for the Ingenious Hunter, which is basically just going to be used to reduce our Sheen cooldown on the Essence Reaver as that is a very core effect on Zeri. For the build, we're going to be running the Essence Reaver with your Mortal Shield Bow, Phantom Dancer, and Infinity Edge. As mentioned, the Essence Reaver is extremely core on Zeri because she can spam it so hard. Uh, the Shield Bow is what makes the most sense because she does still benefit a lot from tankiness. So if you're, even if you're going to be building crit, you would rather go for the tankier crit mythic rather than the damage oriented ones. Now one thing that's important to note about Zeri and her Q is that you basically have longer range against opponents that are walking towards you than against opponents who are running away from you. So as you can see, as Lola just walks up here, she just keeps walking into my Qs and I can just very easily kite her. Whereas, when they're just trying to run away from me, there's not much I can do to hit them. But the way you want to play as Zeri generally is you want to let the opponents just walk into you and you want to punish them for that. So, she's pretty good against a support like Lulu, for example, who can't really really do anything to me except uh, if she walks into my Q range. But uh, against an ADC like Jinx, uh, who has very long range when she switches to rockets, it's a lot harder for me to punish that. But uh, it comes more into effect later on when she gets more range. In the early game, here I can at least put out some damage onto her, especially as she has to walk up the farm. So here on the turret, for example, uh, I can't do too much to harass, but it, you know, if Jinx is going to be in the minigun, which she has to be in order to farm, then I actually can walk up and try and harass her a little bit. And as Lulu tries to walk up to punish, I can just easily poke her back and just, you know, like I said, kite her. Uh, if they have to walk into my Qs, then there's like no way they can hit me without me hitting them first and just walking away. Anyway, Maokai just recalled here, but I don't really have anything to back for. Uh, my two main things that I would like to back for, uh, or you in general would like to back for on your first base as Zeri, are either Sheen or Berserk, because I can't get either one of those, and I'm full HP, full mana. There's just no point at all backing here, so I'm just going to stay. One thing to notice that it's fine to use your fully charged passive to help you lost hit uh, in general uh, uh, in the early game, but you know, especially if you're under turret and you could use that help to help you lost hit, then that's fine. But uh, the later the levels get, especially when you have an engaged support like Maokai, the more you just want to hold on to that and have it just ready for a fight. Anyway, it seems like there's some sort of fight going on here, so I'm just going to try and lost hit the cannon here with W and move over for this. I need to be there in time for this wave to crash and get most of those lost hits, but I have some time to move over here and see if I can do anything. Um... Okay, actually, maybe... Yeah, nice. Okay, I got the kill there. Perfect. So that's going to be worth whatever CSI I miss here. Alright, so using the passive to lost it a bit there. Okay, I wasn't actually expecting Maka to engage already. But I've got that charge to back up again now, so if I get the Jinx here, should be an easy kill. Oh, nope, never mind. Got exhausted. I'm gonna flash out here, because I think I would take too much damage if I don't. Okay, this is looking really good, though. Yep, gonna be two free kills for me. Let's go. It was gonna be fine even, though, even without the Nuna showing up. I think I just needed to flash out and just wait out the exhaust. But I didn't want to be exhausted in the range of both of them. I'm just gonna focus 1v2 while I'm not able to put out much damage, so... I think I just had to flash out there. But then they grew it from Maokai, so it's all good. And unfortunately, one of Zeri's weaknesses is that she's pretty much got no wave clear early on. Uh, however, that weakness does subside later on uh, as crit Zeri, because you actually do a lot of AUE uh, or wave clear with your E when you're critting. So that's a weakness that regular or Bruce's Zeri only really gets rid of, like three items, or two items at the very least. But... Um, you know, as soon as you start building any damage whatsoever on crit area, you get rid of that weakness very fast. Anyway, I've had, this is prob probably actually the best first base that I've ever had on Zeria. I've just got the Essence River at 6 minutes, which is really insane. Um, 
I'm literally never going gonna run out of mana now, by the way, because I can just constantly proc my Q, uh, mana-less. Which will proc the Essence Reaver and give me some mana refund. So it's just gonna be impossible to run out of mana now, so I can just ban my abilities as much as I want. As we get in the lane here, and I'm already ganking. Oh, I'm just I'm just barely out of range, and I, I should have been able to get a little with the W there though, but I missed. Oh god, didn't mean to take a turret shot there. All right, that's a shame we didn't manage to get any more kills there, but a well. Just gonna use my W there a little bit for wave clear, a little bit for harass. Could use my E right now to wave clear, but I want to hold it in case Talon ganks. I'm not really sure where he is right now. Yeah, exactly. Should be okay, though. He's actually quite low, so even if he were to engage here... Oh, actually, he does have 6, though, doesn't he? Yeah, I gotta... We gotta watch out for that. Um, I could use my W here for vision, just check if he's there. Then we can place a ward. Seems like he's not. Yeah, we're good. Luna seems to think he's on Drake, though. No, nope, he's not. I'm actually much healthier already, so I'm actually... Yeah, I'm ready for a fight here if we want to fight. I'm just gonna go straight in. Fast burst onto the Lulu. That should be easy to chase the Jinx down. There we go. Yeah, I can help him with the Drake now. Ball wave already got the uh, crashed. All right, so we get back into lane here with the Berserkers and just the longsword that will eventually build into Noon Quiver. So Ber Berserkers Grease is a pretty good power spike on Zeri. You know, the amount of attack speed you get this early on is just pretty huge for massively decreasing your Q cooldown. Okay, I don't have ult for this fight, but uh, as you can see, I do have a lot of burst though between my passive and my W. So we lead with a passive, and then while Jinx is slowed from that, then we also follow it up with a W. And because she's slowed, it's going to be harder for her to get out of range of that. It's just a lot of uh, hard to avoid burst. Fortunately, not going to be able to pick up the kill, but uh, we did easily win the fight. And that damage should hopefully stick. I mean, it's, yeah, as you can see here, like, uh, as Lulu tries to poke me there, it just takes a cue to the face. She tri like, every time she tries to walk up and try and do anything to me, I just cue her. Like, Zarya is just really, really good against short-range champions. It's one thing that uh, is really annoying to me when I play Tristan against her. I just can't go aggressive on her at all, you know? Because uh, if I want to walk up and place the bomb on her, uh, she can just cue me and walk away. If I try an auto... Attack poke her, she just cues me and walks away. There's no way that low range champions can actually touch you on Zeri. They so much as try, you just cue them to the face and they take you they just keep taking repeated poke until they learn their lesson, basically. Whereas a champion like Jinx, harder to abuse, but that it is, yep, it is technically doable. If she's gonna disrespect me like that, then just let me get in her face. Free double there because the Jinx was like too greedy trying to dodge that W. If she'd been hit by that W, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But to try and avoid it, she just stood like so far forwards that I could just keep queuing her. Uh, ends up dealing so much damage to her that I just can dash in there and finish her off. Huge mistake from her. Okay, what do we want to get here? Um, actually, I was going to get the new cover, but actually, I think there's some sustain will be really good here. Because, as noted, um, tankiness is really good on Zeri. Sustain is a form of tankiness. Also, you know, just always make sure you're leaving the base this way. It just saves a lot of time. But yeah, um, it's kind of hard for her to avoid damage in certain some circumstances, and the longer she can stay alive in fights, the more of a threat she will be. So I'm just going to buy the Vamp Scepter here. I think I'm already doing so much damage that uh, the value out of the lifesteal will be huge. Also, while I'm waiting for this wave to push in, I'm going to get there too late to um, threaten the Jinx, I think, so... Just going to farm golems while I wait for her to show that in, just to pump up my stats per minute a little bit. Ow. Okay, bad W. But we can just walk up, hit her with the passive. 
Again, I don't quite have ult ready for this fight, but... Would be an easy win if she didn't have flash to get out. Yeah, it's still gonna be an easy win, though. And then it's just the cherry on top that'll... Potentially give me the double. I won't actually get the kill on Lulu, but... We do at least take her down, which is even, you know, better than just uh, only taking down Jinx, at least. So here I'm just going to be comboing my passive with the Qs to take this turret down. Okay, it's getting blocked by minions now. <laughs> so I'm just going to focus on the wave now, because I have to uh, get out of turn range anyway. And here we go. Alright, so we could definitely look to back now. Just gonna clear this ward first. You can clear wards very fast on Zeri. It's one of her, well, not not one of her biggest strengths. It's a small thing, but it's it's something that's really nice about her. Because you can combo your passive as well as your Qs to take those down. So if somebody just places a ward right in front of you, you don't even need to look up your sweeper or pink or anything to take them down. You can just really, really fast burst it down with Q auto Q before it goes invisible. And then another cool thing to note is that you can actually queue uh, pinks in brushes without uh, getting to see them. You, if you know more or less, or well, if you know their exact position, you can just queue that position four times and the pink will die without you ever seeing it. So that's cool. Just gonna stop by red here, especially because when I'm not really sure what to move on the map, I think. If Vagar goes bot, which is what I would prefer, then I should be able to go mid and start grouping. Uh, nobody's pushing bot right now anyway, so there'd be no wave to pick up. So I guess either way, I'm just going to be going mid. Guess I'll just shove out a wave real quick before we do Drake. Going to play it a little bit risky here. Just use my E for that to clear the wave faster. Yeah, we can just try and trap maybe while Luna's on the Drake. Or we can just maybe get a pick on Lulu here. Nice. I'm actually dealing a lot of damage now. Holy shit, that was a lot of burst onto Lulu. Yeah, she got too close here. Fucking exhaust though. Oh my god, that damage. Alright, nice. So we got the Drake there and we also win the fight. Huge. Good thing I had flash, otherwise I was definitely dead to Talon, I'm pretty sure. Not sure mock I peel could have uh, prevented his burst. Also just gonna point out, I've not dropped below like 70% mana all game long. It's actually impossible to run out of mana after the moment you finish Essence River. It's a really, really nice advantage of going crit. You can just use your spells as much as you want. I mean, she's usually not a champion that suffers from mana issues, so it's not like hugely OP. But it is definitely really nice. And as you can see, I just completely wiped out that back wave. That usually doesn't happen at this stage with the um, Bruiser build. But uh, when you deal a lot of damage per Q because you're building crit, you know, you're just building pure DPS. That DPS actually helps your wave clear as well when you're at auto attacking every single minion of the wave at once. As you do with Zeri E. With the Bruiser build, you get Triforce, which, you know, it, do it does a lot of damage through the, um... Oh, hang on. Shit, I'm having some regrets here, I think. That's a Jax. Um, gonna try... Nah, I'm fucked. Oh, what? I killed Ori. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even notice her HP. I was only attacking her, trying to get my E off cooldown, so I could jump through the wall. I didn't succeed. I was not paying attention to her HP at all. Nice. Anyway, gonna be moving on to the Phantom Dancer here. Uh, usually we would go Runance here, but um, this time we're gonna be trying out the Runance because it's got a higher win rate on her at the moment, ever since Runance got nerfed on her. Um, it used to be that it would amplify the amount of um, times that your ultimate proc'd and it uh, massively reduced your E cooldown and generate more ultimate stacks. Doesn't do that anymore. It's still a really good item on her, but potentially not quite as good as Phantom Dancer. Not really sure. I haven't really tested it before, so we're gonna try that for the first time now here. Let's see what we think about it. So I'm just gonna go for the Raptors here. Because uh, at the moment, 
Bottom lane wave, you know, there is a bottom lane wave there, but my minions are just annihilating that wave. Uh, there wouldn't be much to arrive to there. And Vega's already taking care of the mid wave, so I want to stay grouped around mid, because there's no point going bot at the moment. And so to do that, we're just going to take a little camp that's close to mid lane, but not too far away. Nice miss, loser. Oh, that was meant to go through the turret. Shit, didn't see her, I'm blind. Mm, that's not too bad. I'm dealing a lot of damage. I'm taking a lot of damage as well, but I've, I've also got the shield bow here so I can kind of bait. Alright, doesn't even matter. Not needed. One underwhelming thing about the uh, <laughs> the crippled though is that because you kill the enemy teams so fast, you know you don't get any of those like highlight Zeri clips where you all attack the enemy at the enemy team like fucking a hundred times without anybody dying, so you end up moving at like a thousand movement speed for like a minute straight. Now you just kill the enemy teams too fast. You know it, it's it's a good thing you know that you kill enemies so fast. It's just also a shame that you never get to run at a thousand movement speed because the enemy teams are dying so fast that you don't actually get that many stacks in your ultimate. It's, it's not a downside uh, in terms of efficiency, but it is a downside in terms of fun, you know? Some something I thought you should know. But yeah, this uh, build is definitely a lot less emphasis on the usual Zeri playstyle we've become uh, accustomed to, which is, you know, pretty much killing the enemy team by death by a thousand cuts, you know? You still don't have quite the usual damage for an ADC, but uh, still way more than you would with the Bruiser World. Okay, that's potentially just a free kill here. Oh, pfft. <laughs> okay. Ow, Jesus. Okay, wow. Oh, that's a lot of burst, my god. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> yeah, the Q can actually hit plants, so try not to be in front of a blast cone when you try and auto attack enemies. It's the same awkward thing that happens with Twitch ult, where you're just sitting on a blast cone, you want to auto attack an enemy, so you're like, yeah, you know what, I'll just uh, pop ultimate here, auto attack them, and then you just go flying through the air. At least it's not as bad as Twitch, because with Twitch, whenever that happens, you're kind of wasting part of your ultimate, which is a really big deal. At least with Zeri, you're just, uh, you know, reducing your DPS in general. You're not, uh, like, fucking over any of your cooldowns that you used for that fight. Oh, that's going to be an easy collapse on Jax. He is very mispositioned here. Just going to wait for the E to run out before I go in. Tried to do that before as well, but uh, I would have thought that it would have ended sooner. Earlier, I kind of misunder uh, mistimed the cooldown there. Or the uptime. Yeah, so I can just farm the wolves here and just let my... The rest of my team take the mid wave, or sorry, the bot wave. Let's go. Hmm. Yeah, so at least this shield bolt keeps me alive there, but I can't really do too much to Ori there, unfortunately. I would need more ultimate stacks and be faster in order to like properly catch up to her and deal some damage. That's fine. So I'm resisting the temptation to use my passive here, because uh, it's not necessary at all to take the inhib. And who knows, maybe I'll need it for killing a champion soon. Whoops. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to do anything to Ori, because of my relatively low range. Um, I can actually hit her with a Q whenever she goes for the QW, but it's also very hard to avoid the QW when I do that. And she definitely wins that trade if she's only taking one Q while I take QW. Yeah, can camp here, see if maybe somebody will show up here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. What was the flash? Yeah, so as you can see, when I'm when I'm the one chasing the jinx. And she's got rockets, and she's got, you know, the massive range she does now. 
I'm not gonna be too good at trade for me because as she's hiding away from me she's also you know like escaping the key range it's much better when she's running into me for whatever reason which i mean she wouldn't which is why not necessarily the greatest champion to fight against Zeri. but uh with engage support like maokai the lane phase wasn't too rough because at least uh, we had a way of closing that gap Alright, and that's gonna be the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe when you see more content like this in the future, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later, gamers.